Hey, I'm back with another video again. You can see by the title, when you think you have God's approval, think again. Think twice. Because, because you don't feel conviction no more, that don't mean you got God's approval. Now let's dive into the Holy Scriptures and let's talk about it. Now let's start this off in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to start reading in verse 5. The scripture says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Now you got to analyze your life. Pay attention to your lifestyle. Pay attention to the things you say, to the things you do in this life every day. And see if it's lining up with the faith of God. He says, Paul tells the Corinthians, prove yourselves. So that's why I say, line your, compare your life to the Bible. Prove yourself. Are you lining up? The scripture says, know ye not yourselves. Like, don't you know, is what Paul is saying, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. See, don't you know, for those who have been born again, that Jesus is in you now. But the only way he is not in you since you became born again is you became a reprobate. Reprobate has several different meanings like without morals, shame, it's a rejection. You are rejecting, uh, you unprincipled or morally corrupt and you in opposition to what is right. Okay, so if you have became born again, Jesus Christ is in you. Paul is saying, telling the Corinthians, except they have now become morally corrupt or become uh, in a rejective um, lifestyle to the faith. That's why he tells them to examine themselves whether they be in the faith, to see if they in the faith. Let's continue. Verse 6, But I trust that ye know that we are not reprobate. See, Paul had that confidence that because he was able to examine himself. That's why he was able to tell the Corinthians to examine themselves because he knew he was in the faith so he can speak from confidence. He says, now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved. He don't want you to just appear approved. Don't do evil. Don't just appear like you are approved of God. He says, but that ye should do that which is honest. So don't just appear. Don't fake it now. You can't fake it till you make it now. Ain't no faking it till you make it. <laughs> don't just appear approved. But he says, but that ye do that which is honest. Do the right thing. That's what he's saying. Though we be as reprobates, comparing it. We, we like someone who have rejected, but no, we ain't reject nothing. We in the truth around here, as Paul is saying, hey, we do what's honest. Don't just appear to be approved. All right. Now, once again, compare your life to the Bible, to the faith, to see if it lines up. Let's go over to the book of Titus, chapter one, and let's look at verse 16. Uh... Scripture says they profess, they use in a mouth, right? They speak in words that they know God. So they profess and they know God, but in works, in actions, in a lifestyle, they deny him. Why? Because they just mouth. They say they know God. I'm of God. The Bible says that let they that name the name Christ depart from iniquity. 
Yeah, you got to depart from iniquity. You can't just be a mouthpiece about this, but you got to, your actions got to follow. Like the faith in the works. You can't say you got faith and don't have works to show it. Praise God. All right, so they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. All right, so they reject good works in a life you can't see it they don't have the works to follow but they confess with their mouth i know god well you just a liar that's what you are because jesus says that you know his works have to abide in us we can't just be a mouthpiece about this we you know faith without works is dead Profession without works is a lie. Therefore, it's dead faith. All right? So, let me show you an example. When we come into the judgment of Christ, Jesus gave a perfect example of a person who profess with a mouth, but their works don't add up. Let's look at Matthew 7. Let's go over to verse 20 and 21. 21, rather. Well, yeah, 2021. 20, Jesus says, whereby by their fruits ye shall know them. See, that's the actions, that's the works that Paul is talking about. You can't just be someone that appear to be approved and living right or you know, uh, in the faith. You can't appear that way because Jesus said, by your fruit, they shall know you. You shall know them by their fruit, okay? It's the action. Well, how is their lifestyle um, showing? What are they doing? What are they doing? Do they line up with the faith? Do they line up with the scriptures? Or are they just talking? A lot of people just talk, all right? We all get, I'm guilty of it before. But now I'm trying to walk in this thing right. All right. Now let's look at 21. So Jesus said in 20, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. In verse 21, not, now listen, this is a perfect example of speaking, doing things with your mouth, speaking, professing, but don't have the works to show. Not everyone that say it unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. See, they professing, Lord, Lord. But he says, not everyone that do that. Is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth. But he that do. The will. Of my father which is in heaven. So you can't just say Lord. Lord. But you have to do. The will. Of the father. Alright. Listen he says many will say. To me in that day. Lord. Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? See, they spoke. They professed things with their mouth. They prophesied in his name. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. They say they done many wonderful works now. But look what Jesus say. He says, and then will I profess to them. See, they profess with their mouth. Now Jesus is going to profess with his mouth. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, ye that work iniquity. See, they works didn't line up with their profession. You see what I'm saying? They works didn't line up with what they were saying. They was professing to know God. But in works, they denied him. Why? Because Jesus called them. He said that they work iniquity. Depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So that's what they works were. They works was iniquity. And we're about to see more of in this iniquity that the scripture is talking about. Now, let's go over to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Romans uh, chapter 1. And I want to start reading at verse 20. Follow me. Follow me in the scriptures now. 
Because I, I need you to see this. Let's start at verse 20. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. See, those things that God was able to speak into existence in creation is now seen. When he said, when he spoke the light, the greater light and the lesser light, when he spoke all the existence into creation, now it's seen, it's clearly seen. And that and see what he spoke was invisible. Because before this became a visible thing, it was invisible. There was nothing but God until he spoke it, then it became clearly seen. And what is being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. See, God has revealed his eternal power in his creation. He showed you how powerful he is in what he was able to do by speaking something that was invisible into existence. So now that it's clearly seen and now it's understood that it's um, what's made. What's made. By seeing what's made, we can understand God, okay? He says, even his eternal power and Godhead, God revealed himself through, um, I'm, I'm going to use G, through Jesus Christ, because in Christ dwelt the, the uh, fullness of the Godhead. It was in him bodily, all right? And look, so that they are without excuse. So unbelievers don't have an excuse because what's invisible has been um, understood by the things that are made. So the unbelievers are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. See, God didn't get the glory he deserved, being God. All right? Because look how powerful he is. Look what he was able to do. Look what he did through Jesus. So... When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. They weren't even thankful to God, he's saying. Paul is saying. But look, he says, uh, but became vain in their imagination. So instead of thanking God, they became vain in their imaginations. All right? In their thinking. And their foolish heart was darkened. They, they little foolish heart in them, it became dark. Jesus said, <laughs> that uh, men love darkness more than the light. It says, uh, professing themselves to be wise, so they profess to be wise. But look what he said, they became fools. See, foolishness with man, I mean, wisdom with um, man's wisdom is foolishness to God. And it says, and change the glory of the in uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. See, they will make, um, you know, Israel, man, uh, you know, they will make them, them idols. They will make idols out of different things. Even a man, idol. look at Buddha today, Buddha, a fat man, fat, bald head, Asian man. All right. That's an image made like unto corruptible man. But so they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They will make idols of animals and stuff. They didn't, they didn't want God. They didn't want the eternal uncorruptible God. They'd rather make a false God, fake God. They can't even talk. Can't do nothing for them. And that's proven in Scripture. Now look at Elias when he when he dealt with those those Baal prophets. God, the real God, proved himself when he set everything on fire. The offering and and um the, all the water and everything that was burnt up, dried up. That's a different story there. But so let's go to 24. Wherefore God also, so now this is what God did. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lust of their own heart. See, God, if you don't want to retain God in your knowledge, guess what he'll do? He'll give you up 
to that uncleanness. If you don't want to abide in the will of God, he ain't going to force you. He'll warn you. He'll try to correct you. But if you adamant that you is going to do what you're going to do, he'll give you up to that uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. So he'll let you do the things that that's in your heart. Jesus says out of the heart proceeded fornications, adulteries, and murders, and all that stuff is in the heart. So if you is adamant that you want to do that, God will give you up to do that. So those lust in your heart, he'll let you do it. Why? And look at what he say. And he'll let you do it to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Hey, you made your mind up. So God going to make his mind up. I'm going to let you do it. But don't think you're going to get away with it now. Let's keep going. So, who changed the truth of God. So they changed the truth of God into a lie. So everything that God said don't do, everything God say is right, man today say um, they do the things God say not to do. And they call the things that God said right and wrong. I know you heard it plenty of times from preachers. They call, the, the scripture says that they call evil good and good evil. So what's good to God is bad to us. For example, marriage. The Bible says marriage is honorable and all. Men today say they don't want to be married. Or you ain't got to be married. I don't want to be no married. They think that's a bad thing. Let's keep going. So they turn who change the truth of God into a lie, just like homosexuality. God says it's an abomination. Men today, they walking around with, with rainbow flags. But God say that's a lie. So they turned the truth of God into a lie as if what God saying and doing is, 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 is wrong. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. People do that today. They put men above God. Even in the this faith. People value men's words over the words of this Bible. They would take a man's, a preacher today, a so-called prophet, apostle today, they'll take his words and his interpretation over the Bible, over what's written from God by holy men that were instructed to write it from the Holy Spirit. But they'll take a man word today saying he got revelation <laughs> or it's a mystery. <laughs> and I'm saying it because I heard it for myself. It's crazy. But anyways, so they worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Let it be so. For this cause, now for this cause, for this reason. God gave them up unto vile affections. Vile affections, shameful passions. So God will give you up to those shameful passions. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Lesbian. Ask yourself. Do a woman fit a woman? Look at the anatomy. Do a man fit a man? So what that is, is changing the natural use into that which is against nature. Nature don't put man and man together. Look at his anatomy. And I don't want to be graphic, but come on, look at the man's anatomy. Do it work? Do the woman's anatomy work? Do that work. What's the right fit? All right. Man for woman, woman for man. That's the way God made it. The Bible says that man shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife. That's a man and a woman. And the two become one. Now we one, we one piece. We one whole now. We one together. You can't be one like this. That's two. Can't be one like this. That's two. But this, now you want. All right? So, 
and likewise also the men. So just how women exchange the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one towards another men and women burning in lust towards their own gender that's a shame men with men working that which is unseemly unseemly um shameful that's what it means shameful and receiving in themselves that recompense or that repayment that vengeance of their error that was meet that's due so when a woman on a woman and a man on a man and you changing god's truth into a lie they are receiving in themselves that recompense or that repayment of their error, which is due to you. God is a loving God, but he is a just God. God's ways are right. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And this is the perfect example. People today say you should be able to love who you want to love. If a man and a man want to get married, they should be able to do that. If a woman and a woman want to get married, they should be able to do that. Okay. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And this scripture is proving it. And receiving in themselves that recompense, this repayment of that error, which was me, which was due. It's due to you. All right. You can't change God's truth into a lie. So God is a liar. Are you calling God a liar? Now, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. And you will find that out in Judgment Day when Jesus is revealed from heaven with his angels. You standing before his throne. All right. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That's that, that, um, that immoral mind, that rejective type of mind, that mind that don't want to do right. He'll give you up to do that. Why? Because you don't want, you don't want God in your knowledge. You don't want to keep God in your knowledge. You don't care about what God got to say. You want to do it your way. And as a result, God is going to, um, give you up to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Those things that are not right. He's going to let you do it. Why? Because you are being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication and wickedness and covetousness. Um, you know, all that lust and man, man, lust and after what belongs to others. Maliciousness. Okay. Um, full of envy, jealousy and murder and debate and deceit, malignity. Um, whisperers, gossipers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, children. If in, if anybody is a minor on here listening, talking about you too, disobedient to parents. If you want to do that, God will let you do it. He'll let you do it. But don't think because you don't feel some way about it at the time that you're getting away with it. Don't think it's okay. All right? Without understanding, covenant breakers, you don't keep no promises. All you do is make promises and keep them. You make promises um, deceitfully with no intention on keeping them. Without natural affection, implacable, that means unforgiving. People wrong you, you can't forgive them. But yet you want God to forgive you in your mess. But you won't forgive others when they have wronged you. Unmerciful. You show nobody no mercy. You going down everybody's throat for everything they do to you. You ain't merciful at all. But the Bible says that he that, um, he that is, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase. If you're not merciful, then God's not going to be merciful to you. 
even in judgment. But he that give mercy shall receive mercy. So, the get 32. So, person do all these things who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And if you reject God, you don't want to retain God in your knowledge and you still want to live out all these lists of things I've listed here. The Bible says that knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, not only do they do the same things, but they have pleasure in them that do them. So even see, that's why pornography is a sin, because in pornography, when people on there commit fornication, think about it, it's all kind of gay stuff, lesbian porn, all that gay porn, men on men, even man on woman is still a sin. It's still wrong because they commit fornication and they're. Uh, they selling themselves for sex. So it's wrong for us to look at pornography for the simple fact that we can't have pleasure in those who come in fornication. And that proves that in this scripture, this proves fornication is wrong because fornication is one of this list of things I just list here in Romans one from verse, um, verse 29 through 32, 29 through 31. And so we cannot have pleasure. Look at the scripture. It says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. So that's the actors in the porn. They committing such things, they worthy of death. Not only do the same, but look, and have pleasure, but have pleasure in them that do them. So those who like the porn, you know. So yeah, those the actors and those who have pleasure in them that do it, you're worthy of death. So we all got to get this stuff up. I, man, I have to give it up. I'm not I'm not innocent on here trying to tell you I'm some saint. Nah, I ain't no saint. Nah, I, I'm, I, I'm coming to this stuff because I want to do right. You know, I want to do right by God. So things we got to give it up. I'm a guilty of the fornication, all that type of stuff. But we got to change. See, I thank God that he have been grace, gracious enough and merciful enough to give me time. He gave us space to repent. As a matter of fact, in the book of um, 2 Peter, man, it tells us how God does not desire that anyone should perish. Look, it says uh, that uh, God does not desire. Um, oh, no, let me see. Give me a moment here. Let me find it. Let me find it. Here we go. Second Peter chapter three, look at verse eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering. He suffers with us long. Why? Because he is not willing that any should perish, but all, but that all should come to repentance. But we got to understand, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night or death may come as a thief in the night. And so while you alive and well, while you have breath, take advantage of this opportunity that God has given us and let's repent and turn from that stuff. We don't want to we don't want to die and wake up in hell or we don't want to die and then wake up judged. And then Jesus sending us to eternal damnation. So let me say this. For those who have the Holy Spirit. If you initially started off committing a sinful act and you was guilty, you was um, you would feel guilty about it. And and you would, you know, try to repent and go back into it. And then eventually you kept committing the act and then you stopped feeling guilty. It don't mean because you're not feeling guilty no more that God has approved it. It don't mean that you're okay now. It don't mean that you out of hot water. It don't mean that aren't burning coals on your head. What you've done is quench the spirit. So now that you don't feel guilty for doing the act, it don't mean it's right. 
because the scripture tells us it's wrong. So it's going to be wrong up until <laughs> Jesus' words. Jesus said, my words will never pass away. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will never pass away. So it's going to always be wrong. You don't feel guilty because you quench the spirit. So repent, turn to Jesus, live for him. I got to do it. You got to do it. There ain't no difference. We all in this thing together. We all going to face Christ on this judgment seat. The Bible says that all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That we may receive the things done in our body, whether good or bad. So we got to do right, good or evil. All right. So hope you learned something today. When you think you got God's approval, think twice, think again.